Welcome to our community. Susie Thomas with you this morning. So happy to welcome Mary Ellen Acaza and Mariana De Giacomo to the studios. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Always something going on at the Stark County District Library, and uh, that is why you're here today. So first of all, I think what we had said a couple of months ago is you were going to regroup. You had a, a levy up that didn't pass. We were all, I'm going to put it out there. I was stunned. I was stunned that this didn't pass. So i kind of wondering who doesn't vote for the library, but I'm going to get off that soapbox and not get political or anything and just say, you know, then, then you all get together and say, well, it is what it is. Now what? So you've had time to think about the now what's. So tell us what are your plans? So we've been um, working on this almost uh, nonstop since November 6th, and um, we are going to be back on the ballot in May. We went to um, visit with the county commissioners a couple of weeks ago and made the request to be back on the ballot for the primary election on May 7th. And this time we'll be asking for a 2.0 mil for an eight-year levy. And um, this will replace the current levy that's in place. Um, We feel that this is a great opportunity for us to get back on the ballot um, while it's still fresh in people's minds. And um, we want to work really hard to get the word out there about our message, about the services we provide for the community, and um, hoping that it's a success. When you're talking about a replacement levy, then, does this mean for voters and for taxpayers, this is not asking for more money from them. This is just to keep the current money coming in. Well, I, I should clarify. This, okay. this will replace the existing levy that's in place now, but we are asking for additional money. So it'll be a little bit more. A little bit more. Um, I can give you some exact figures. Okay. So this... Um, it will be $26.50 increase over the current levy for somebody who owns a, hun- a house that's um, valued at $100,000 a year. So your average home, they're paying how much more? $7? $26.50. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> okay. That did not register at all. So $26, $26.50 a year? More. For the year? Yes. Okay. That is something that I don't think most people would feel. Right? You you can pretty easily blow $26 on anything at any given time. But I this in, so. instead would be an investment in our library. Yes. Um, this is absolutely an investment not only in our library, but it's an investment in our community. Because um, strong communities have strong libraries. A strong library system um, provides foundation to the community, and um, it improves the quality of life in our community. Mm-hmm. So, And it's an investment in our community for everyone. Whenever something like this does not go through, it usually is a matter of people didn't really grasp the need. Um, Some people's argument might be, well, libraries, who checks out books anymore? We can get them all on our iPads or phones. So what does the library provide now way beyond books? We provide so much more than books. Um, Books are still a very important part of the services we provide, but... We focus heavily on access to information. We provide internet computers in all of our branches that have software on it for people to work on resumes, write letters, um, connect with their friends and family around the world. We also offer Wi-Fi hotspots. Um, We help to bridge the digital divide because not everybody can afford to have the internet in their homes. We also provide our buildings and spaces, and we are really a true space for the community to gather. We offer meeting space for community groups. We also offer study rooms for groups to to collaborate and study together. One of the things that we're asked about most frequently is increased amount of space for people to use to meet together. We also provide our collections. We talked a little bit about books. Um, Our digital collections um, that you can use on your tablet or your phone, that's our Um, most growing area. It's increased over 30% over the last year. We also provide a library of things. So you can borrow things like Wi-Fi hotspots, a kilowatt meter, digital projectors. We have NASA backpacks, a wide number of things that um, we offer to share our resources with our community. And most importantly, the services that our staff provides. We provide outreach to every um, senior citizen center, daycare, and preschool in our service area. We have the largest bookmobile fleet in the state. We also do a tremendous amount of work for early literacy. We're partners in the SPARK program where we visit kids before they get ready to enter kindergarten so that they're ready to learn. 
We also have a number of school partnerships, and um, we also do a lot to support workforce development. Mm. We help people um, research how to find jobs, how to write cover letters, resumes. We also offer a lot of technology classes and one-on-one assistance as well. There's so many things that you said there. Is there a way, first of all, to find a list of all of those types of services? Certainly. Um, You can get online and visit our website. It's www.starklibrary.org. Also, we have a quarterly publication that comes out that promotes all of our events and activities and programs and services. The other thing that comes to mind is so many things that you listed there. You would pay a pretty penny to be able to have access to other ways, and yet everything that you have is at no cost, correct? Yes. All of our services are free. All you need to do is have a library card to take advantage of them. And a library card is free. Yes, your library card is free. Your (laughs) library card is the smartest card in your wallet. I think what people need to to get in the habit, Mariela, is just thinking library first. Mm -hmm. Before we go buy something, before we go rent that projector or whatever, think library first. Mm -hmm. Yes? I, I agree, Susie, and I think a lot of people will be surprised and even delighted by everything that we offer. How are you getting the word out? Will there be any public meetings coming up? Or how do we help you spread the word that this is back on the ballot and that we need it? We are ramping up our campaign now and we'll be posting signs in the community. We will be sending out um, informational mailers and campaign mailers through our PAC. And we just really want to get the message out to the community about everything that we do to support our community. Well, let's talk about the importance of voting, period. Um, Every year, I'm always surprised to find out that just the very small percentage of people went out to vote. Are are you hoping that this is one that really brings folks out? I'm sure you are. Um, I I am hoping that everyone who does come out does support um, our levy on the ballot this May. And yes, I couldn't agree with you more. Voting voting is a very important thing to do. And did you know this? You can even um, register to vote at the library. I did not. Really? Yes. No matter what your precinct is, you can register there. Instead of going down to the Board of Elections or whatever. Yes. Okay. No, you always surprise me, and I always learn something every time you come here. Um, The programs themselves, you've got such unique and and really enriching programs that you offer us. Um, Speaking of books, is one of those. Mariana, you're winding up this year's, right? Tell us what's on tap. Yes, yeah, so our next event in the current Speaking of Books author series is coming up on February 7th at the Canton Palace Theater, and we're very fortunate to be hosting um, best-selling author Mbolo Mbue. She wrote a book called Behold the Dreamers, which was actually an Oprah Book Club selection, and um, the author has won many awards for, for her work. It's her debut novel, and it's really a good one. It touches on many topics that are relevant right now in, in our world. It talks about um, immigration and the American dream and marriage. Um, so it's really a, a wonderful um, story that she's weaved, and she's created some really wonderful, engaging characters that you just kind of fall in love with. And I think because it's so fun to say her name, I'm going to let you say it it one more time. (laughs) So Mbolo Mbue. And she will be where when? At the Canton Palace Theater on February 7th. Doors open at 530 for the event. The event itself begins at 630. But I always encourage people to come early. We set up a pop-up library at the Canton Palace Theater. So if you need to update your library card, um, you want to check out some books, we have a curated collection that we'll be bringing down to the theater so you can check out some read-alikes um, and it also uh, the friends of the library will be there selling in Bolo's book Behold the Dreamers. Mm. Will um, she sign it? She will so awesome. the event includes a presentation and then there's a question and answer period that follows and then she'll be doing a book signing. And charge to attend? is free. Unbelievable. I, I have no idea how you're able to do this. Seriously, who underwrites an author coming in to be able to speak? How do we get to do this? Yeah, we, we do that through a variety of ways. We often look for grants, and sometimes we'll have community sponsorships. So there's a variety of ways that we do that. And then you've got a big finale event for this year's Speaking yes. of Books series. So I'd like to encourage everyone to visit our website and register for seats for the Mbolo event. And while they're there, they can also register for the finale event, which is on April 2nd, also at the Canton Palace Theater with astronaut Mike Massimino. Mm. So he... 
um, is famous for, he was on some Hubble space missions. He wrote a book called Space Man, and it's just the unlikely story of his journey to becoming an astronaut. He talks about himself as um, a tall kid from Long Island who was afraid of heights, and then he ends up going to space. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So um, really a, a great read, and uh, we think there's going to be a lot of interest in that. This is the 50th anniversary of the moon landing this year, so kind of a great tie-in. And that event will be on April 2nd. I so should know this, but I, I don't know this. Is he one of the people who has walked on the moon? I don't think he was okay. the moon. Don't, I know. There's only like a handful Not of people sh- who can make that claim. But he's an he, astronaut. He does have a little claim to fame, though, too. Mm-hmm. Um, fans of the Big Bang Theory will recognize him from <laughs> oh, okay. his appearances on that show. Oh. So he, was, he had a pretty popular um, guest spot that he did on that show. I know, right where they record at Warner Brothers. Yes, indeed. Okay, that's very, very fun. You know, as soon as an astronaut walks in the room... That automatically, that's cool, right? It really is, as yes. Soon, as soon as you've got somebody who's an astronaut who's walked into the room, right. they command attention. Right. We're really looking forward to meeting him as very, well. Very, very cool. And remind us, when will that be again? So that is on April 2nd, Canton mm-hmm. Palace Theater, 630. And mm-hmm. same way to get tickets yes, to, it's to register? Really easy to register for our events. Just go to our website www.starklibrary.org um, just click on the event and then it just asks you for a few simple things your name email address and then you'll be all registered you can and reserve more than one seat as well oh awesome yep, all okay. on the same transaction perfect there's no rest for the weary over there so when do you get started planning your next speaking of book series well, we're kind of already in the midst of exploring some authors so we'll, that'll that'll kick into gear here soon and we're looking forward to that and what tends to be their response when you contact people and say, hey, we're in Canton, Ohio, and we do this series. Uh, Do you get a positive response right away? We we have. some talking into? No, not really. We've had a great response, and um, we've just been very fortunate and um, just had a wide variety of different authors that have have joined us for this series. And we do need to remind people that these tickets, the reservations, because there's not a physical ticket, correct? Correct. But it does go pretty quickly. You don't want to just say, oh, that's a good idea. I'll need to remember to do that. We want to encourage them, jump on it right now. Right. It is a good idea to reserve your seat. It's really easy. It just takes a couple of minutes. How much input do you get? What's the process of uh, thinking about, oh, who should we have next? You know, it's it's a bit of a process. We just start um, exploring some authors. We, you know, talk to a lot of people, work with um, some publishers and agents and um, just, you know, kind of keeping on top of books that are popular and topics that are popular and of interest to our community. And we just kind of start from there. How involved do local book clubs get with the library? I know there are so many in our area. You know, that's a great way for us to promote our events. We have several book clubs that meet at our um, locations, so we definitely promote the events with them. And as you know, for one book, that's one of the um, things that we do each year where we encourage, you know, book clubs in the entire community to read books. And we do that with the Speaking of Books very, very cool. books as well. We are speaking with uh, Mariana De Giacomo and Mary Ellen Acaza, and we're going to be back after these words are listening to our community.